Good morning. And welcome to worship this morning, whether you're joining us in person or online, we're delighted to be able to worship together. May the grace of the risen Lord be with us all this morning as we worship. Tea and coffee will be served at the back of the church as usual today. Um, however, as you'll hear in a minute, we've got a Kirk session meeting, an extraordinary Kirk session meeting at 12.30. So you should still have plenty of time. I promise not to go on quite as long as I did last week, but um, it, we should have time to have tea and coffee and a bit of a chat, and then we'll be looking to close the church up in time for us to get to the Kirk session meeting at the centre at half past 12 today. So we don't like to chase you away, but today it's maybe going to be just a little bit less time than usual. Let's have a look at the intimations. So that's our extraordinary Kirk session meeting. It's at 12.30 today at the church centre. Don't forget that. And then Christian Aid Week. This is Christian Aid Week coming up, starting today. You've hopefully all got a little leaflet that tells you prayer, um, prayer journal for the week. It also has seven actions, seven days, seven ways, seven actions stapled into the front. Things that they're encouraging you to do during this week. Um, become, uh, included in that is become a serial offender. Now, we're not maligning your um, integrity. What we are trying to do is gather some goods for instant neighbour, and the serial offender is about bringing boxes of cereal uh, along with you. When you do your shopping this week, buy an extra box of cereal and bring it along to church next week. So next week's church service is at the cross. There won't be a church uh, service here next Sunday. There will be a united service at the cross, followed by soup at the church centre afterwards. And we're inviting you all to bring uh, your box of cereal with you. If you're not coming next Sunday but would still like to contribute, you can always drop it off in the office or at any of our church buildings. We've also got other things during the week. Sorry, I keep jumping all over the place and confusing you. Go back to the Christian Aid one. <laughs> Um, during this week, we've got other Christian aid uh, activities. Um, on Wednesday, there's an evening with Peter Mitchell at the cross. On Friday, there's a quiz at the cross. And on Saturday, there's the bread and cheese lunch at the garden room at the Stockett. As I said, Sunday service will be at the cross with the soup lunch afterwards in aid of Christian aid at the centre. I hope we'll see you at some or all of those events. Um, I'm sure they'll all be fun as well as raising money for a good cause. That's the Sunday service next week, and that's, I've just told you there will be no service here next Sunday. It will all be at the cross. Right. Let's take a moment to settle ourselves. Let's come to God ready to listen. Let's come to God willing to hear. Bring your gifts and your talents, your hearts and your minds. Come and find your potential. Come and find your peace. Let's sing our first hymn. It's number 448, Shine, Jesus, Shine.
Let's join together in prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, where would we be without your spirit? It moulds us, teaches us, fills us. We want to learn so much more about you, to know you more intimately. As a butterfly becomes a caterpillar, so you enable us to become the person you want us to be, like you. We come to you, Lord, ready to worship, ready to learn, ready for prayer, ready for action. May our worship here spill out into our every day. God, we believe you have called us to unity to live together as one body. But often we've isolated ourselves from others. So forgive us for the times when we've turned our backs on those who are different. We believe you ask us to look, listen and learn from others, to accept and seek to understand. Forgive us for the times when we've ridiculed and attacked those with different viewpoints or failed to love others as we do ourselves. God and creator of all humankind, your son Jesus Christ prayed that your church might be one even as you, our God, are one. May you renew our minds and rekindle your love in our hearts. May we see in your oneness our need for unity. May we see in your threeness our need for community. May we see in your creativity our need for diversity. May we see in yourself our need to love each other. This we pray in Jesus' name. And in his name, I invite you to join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. So we've just said a prayer. What is a prayer? What can you tell me about a prayer? Hannah. Praying to Jesus. Yeah? What, what, is, what do we do when we pray? pray? We pray, yes. We talk. We're talking to... Who are we talking to? Talk. God. God? Jesus? Yeah? We're talking to God and to Jesus, aren't we? Yeah? And what do you think we might say when we're praying? Say? Pray and God. Pray and God. We might use those. Yes, we might pray to God. What do you think we might say to him? Do you think we can... It, this is a difficult question, isn't it? Louisa? Sorry? Thank you. That's it. Yes, we might say thank you. Can you think of anyone, anything you want to say thank you for? For you. Yes, we're thankful for you. We're thankful for all of you, aren't we? And for all of you further back as well. We need to say thank you, that's good. Well done. So, do we say anything else to God? Thank you. We say thank you, yes. Do we sometimes say sorry? Thank you very much, absolutely. And we sometimes say sorry? You've got manners, that's right, and you do. I'm very glad you have. Our prayers are our talking to God, and whether that, that's our manners with other people and we talk to God, we say, thank you for all the things you've given us. Sometimes we say, I'm really sorry, God, I shouldn't have done that or I shouldn't have said that. I'll try to do better. Sometimes we say, please, God, help us. Amen. Yeah. And we always finish it with amen, and Anne likes to say our amens twice as much. 
Do you know what Amen means? Amen means let it be like that. that oh, I agree with everything I've just said. That's why we say Amen at the end of it. We say, God, just emphasize everything. Let it be so. Yeah? I'm going to give you a wee prayer chant today. Now, what I need you to do is to think about all the different times that we might pray. And I, after each line, I'm going to say a line, and then I'm going to point to you, and I want all of you to shout, pray, pray, pray. Do you think you can do that? Shall we have a practice? Come on, you're going to have to do it loud so that they can do it loud as well. Come on. Are we ready? We're getting better. Come on, one more go. That's more like it. Right. Come on. If you're lonely, if you're sad, if you've been good or if you've been bad, if you need help or if you're okay, if it's a sunny or a rainy day, if it's a holiday, you've just had a fight with your friend, if you feel anxious or starting to worry, if you need something done in a hurry, if there's something happening, a special day, we're getting quieter again, if there's nothing going on and it's normal in every way, if you just want to talk to the Lord, be sure he listens to your every word. So, oh, well done. Well done. Give yourselves a round of applause. I'm sure you do some praying when you go downstairs as well. And we always do some praying up here. And I hope you're doing some praying at home. And you can tell God anything when you pray. Things that make you happy, things that make you sad, things that make you worried. You can tell God anything, and that's just praying. Or do you know, if you're feeling really sad and you don't know what to say, it's okay to just sit quietly and say, God, you know what's going on. I don't have the right words. Lots of different ways to pray. You can pray by shouting, you can pray in silence, you can pray in song, and you can pray with other people or on your own. Lots of different ways to pray. Yes, lots of other people, and it's always good to do it with people, but it's also good to have your quiet time with God. So, we know God's got the whole world in his hands, and he can listen to all our prayers. So we're going to sing our next song. It's got the whole world in his hands. It's printed, you've got an insert, and it's on the screen. I hope we're going to... Can we do some actions to this, do you think? Can we stand up and do some actions to this one? Yeah. Yes? Excellent. And at the end of this, we will remain standing again as we do a blessing on those who are going down to the halls. Right, he's got the whole world in his hands.
now, hold on, stay standing for a second. We'll get you into the habit of this, hopefully. A blessing on those, our young ones as they go out. So remember that God has the whole world in his hands and that God loves you. Go knowing that you can always talk to God. Go with God's blessing. Amen. The first reading this morning comes from Acts chapter 1, reading verses 15 to 17 and 21 to 26. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers and sisters. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Brothers and sisters, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit, through David, foretold concerning Judas who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. <clears throat> for he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph called Barsabas, was also known as Justice and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the 11 apostles. The second reading comes from John chapter 17, verses 6 to 19. Jesus prayed, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. <clears throat> All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we were one, as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you. And I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they may also be sanctified in truth. May God bless these readings of his holy word. Let's sing again hymn 192, All My Hope on God is Founded.
The Right Reverend Sally Foster Fulton has been moderator of the General Assembly for the last year and will hold that position for one more week. Next Saturday, the moderator designate will be appointed as moderator. Her theme for her year as moderator has been Ubuntu. It's a Zulu phrase meaning, I am because you are, or I am because we are. We cannot be fully human by ourselves. We are created to be in community, to live and learn and love from and with each other. She has written a reflection on how today's texts embody that phrase, Ubuntu. Reflecting on how do we build together. The Church of Scotland is facing huge challenges as we restructure our presbyteries, lean into these mission plans, let go of or reimagine long-loved spaces, and move into new ones that need our homemaking skills. The local church is facing challenges of change and how to be a different community and who we are as part of that. Sally has drawn some interesting comparisons within both our readings, and a lot of this today's sermon will be based on some of her reflections. In the Gospel reading, she compares the Word and the world. And in the Acts reading, she compares those days to these days. So in our Gospel reading, Jesus prays before his arrest for his friends, that they may be one as he is one with the Father. He asks that they may be protected in the uncertain times. He knows they're going to be facing uncertain times. He asks that they be made holy, i.e. set apart from the world's unbelief by the truth of who Jesus is. The way in which Jesus prays helps us to understand the breadth and potential of prayer. Not a formula of words, but an ongoing conversation and relationship with God and Jesus that helps to inform and shape everything that we are and everything that we do. Jesus prays for his disciples, his followers, his friends, and prepares them for his departure. And Jesus prays for them in their hearing. It's an intimate moment. There is also a strong interplay with the understanding of the world and the word. I suspect Myra is very conscious of how many times those two words appeared in that reading, and you have to concentrate to get them all right. The world, or cosmos, the Greek word, is referred to 11 times in that reading. And the world could be interpreted as the whole of created order, or all of humanity, or those parts of humanity not in right relationship with God. And grappling with what the author means by cosmos offers different insight into the conundrums we face as people of faith. At the beginning of the beginning, God loved the world into being and called it good. God's spirit breathed into the human creature and gave us life. God became one of us walked with us, lived, loved, taught, fed, healed, forgave, and calls us to do the same. And now as Jesus prepares the disciples for the time they will be in the world without him, Jesus prays this prayer for him, that they go into the world and take him with them wherever they go. that they take the word. The word, logos, deeply provocative. It's that logos is the word used in that first chapter of John to introduce Christ's presence at the very beginning of the world. In the beginning was the word. 
This word, this wisdom was there calling us into being, crafting and creating and calling the world good. The word is in us, in the world God created, in the world Christ loves, and in the world the Spirit moves in. In our gospel reading today, when Jesus says, I have given them your word, he uses Logon, specifically echoing that first chapter of John, taking us back to the beginning of creation. The challenge to us is not only to embrace the world God created, but to be part of its transformation. There will be times when other people will hate us, turn against us, turn away from us, because the wisdom we share threatens power or position. And that tension is part of what we are called to when love, forgiveness, peace, justice, radical welcome is what we are intent on building. The word was in the world from the very beginning. It is the creative imagination that crafted it to be good. And then we look at our Acts reading. The first three words of that reading, in those days, what days? Those days were the days immediately following the story of Christ's resurrection and ascension. They came on the heels of that iconic statement from the two messengers in white robes who stood beside the disciples as they watched Jesus ascend into heaven as they stared in vain while a cloud took him out of their sight. Why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. That feeling of suddenly being cut loose that the disciples must have felt, that The idea that your guide has gone from your sight or your template has been taken from your hands resonates in the beginning of Acts, and the new new reality continues to unpack itself in our text for today. Peter argues that there needs to be a replacement for Judas. There needs to be continuity within the group of longtime followers. And we could say that this reflects the symbolism of the 12 disciples mirroring the 12 tribes of Israel. But one thing that kind of shows up is they're making this up as they go along. They're finding their way together. And they do it by casting lots. They propose two candidates, but there's no vote or complex discernment process. It's decided on the throw of a dice, after praying about it, but they trust the throw of a dice. Often when we're building something new, there is no established protocol, there's no settled set of instructions. You just have to do your best with what you know. We have to determine how and where we're called to embrace that spirit, the spirit that brings comfort, but also challenge. You could say we build together, and I suspect it's no coincidence that the moderator designates theme for the coming year is build together. And as we build together, we will encounter times when we need to seek the spirit and follow the footsteps of Jesus and create a new thing that honors the call to be his body today. The disciples seem to understand that they needed to collaborate They need to be collaboration between people and God. And how do we feel when God might be calling us to something new? How do we build together for the future in these days as they did in those days? What do we need to be considering first? What do we need to clear out the way? We do it by staying close to God and staying close to one another, building relationships with God and with each other, remembering that we and others are made in God's image, praying for each other, loving one another, 
trusting. These are how we live as Christ's people in these days, as they did in those days. Sometimes getting it right, sometimes making mistakes and having to say we're sorry, accepting that we're human, but trusting that God has our back. The word is in us, in the world God created, in the world Christ loves, in the world in which the spirit moves. In God's name, amen. Before we come to our prayers for others, it's my sad duty to intimate the death of Ray Smith, latterly of Gordondale Court. Please keep her loved ones in your prayers. The funeral is on a week tomorrow at Came Hill Crematorium. I haven't got a time for it, so please keep your eye on the press if you would like to be at that funeral. Let's pray. Creating God, you call us to worship as your children. Made in your image, with a divine spark within each of us. The image you have shaped within us, mysteriously, incredibly, a reflection of your own being, is being seen in the multiple refractions of our variegated humanity, in the prismatic kaleidoscopes of our shared lives, our interconnectedness, our being with each other. We seek you, God. We long for you. And thankfully, you are not far off, not hidden. We need only remember that you are most easily found when we find you together and when we are humble enough to look even in the faces we find most strange and unfamiliar. Jesus, as you prayed for your disciples so long ago, pray for us. Pray for our well-being, for our protection, for your joy to be made complete in us, for our spiritual growth, for your truth to be made complete in us. Jesus, we often don't know how to pray, so pray for us and pray with us, that we may be one with you, one with each other, and one in ministry to the world. Jesus, pray for your weak ones, your strong ones, the ones who have illnesses and those who care for them. The ones near death and those who will mourn them. The ones who breeze through life and the ones who struggle in life. Holy Spirit, hold us in the promise which is everywhere about us. Cradle us in the longing for a new world and new living. Holy Spirit, comfort us in the silence of memories that haunt us. Feed us in the hunger for justice that aches in us. Holy Spirit, reassure us in the yearning for love in each of our days and hear us in the call for peace in our crazy world. God, three in one, may we see in your oneness our need for unity. May we see in your threeness our need for community. May we see in your creativity our need for diversity. May we see in yourself our need to love each other. Amen.
We sing our closing hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. 167. As people of faith, we have gathered for worship. As people of faith, we now return to the world. Go out to share the story of faith, the story of life, in word, in deed, in speech, in action, knowing that God goes with you, sharing the laughter and the hope, the fears and the tears. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with each one of you and those whom you love, near and far away, now and always.